Good day to all. This year, the Institute of Civil Engineering, which used to be the Department of Civil Engineering, is celebrating its 111th year, which falls at this unfortunate time of the pandemic. We are on our second year in lockdown now and almost done with the second semester of our virtual academic lives. So, how has everything been for ICE this past year? How are we managing? We, like the rest of the world, had to shift to remote learning for all our classes. We made policy adjustments in grades, minimum required academic load to be enrolled, deadlines, even course content, in consideration of all the difficulties that both students and faculty face. The issues can range from mental health, brought about by the physical isolation and anxiety, lack of access to the internet and gadgets, absence of a study and workspace at home conducive to learning and working. It is a challenging act to balance all these issues with the need to maintain the academic rigor of being able to meet the set learning objectives of the courses. We have to ensure everyone gets equal access to our learning materials. So we printed course packs and sent it to those who had internet issues. To ensure everyone is equipped with gadgets, we had a fun drive to provide students who needed a laptop with one. Thank you to all our generous donors, especially our alumni, ACES, aggregates, our families and friends for pitching in. You made a big difference in the lives of our students who needed assistance. With the restrictions on physical assemblies, we had to hold all our events virtually. We welcomed 130 first-year students and held the orientation for them and their parents. We organized the recognition rights for 154 of our PS and 19 MS graduates. We also held the regular Faculty Student Dialogue, or CE Hour. All of these events were successfully held online. It was very challenging, but we are happy we were able to pull it through. We are preparing for the Student Internship Program, which is a new required course as part of our four-year BSE curriculum. It has to be done totally on a virtual mode. Thank you to our partner agencies and private companies for agreeing to such an arrangement. The pandemic may be raging, but the need to attend to the everyday operations of ICE as well as its continuous development remain. So, we plodded on with our regular virtual meetings. The online setup did not deter us from thoroughly dissecting, deliberating, and agreeing on the issues at hand. Physically, our space is well taken care of by our frontliners. The guards, janitors, and the administrative staff help us in ensuring that the key operations are in place. Receiving and sending out documents, securing the compound, and maintaining the general upkeep of the premises. To support them in this endeavor and protect them from being infected by the virus, we provided them a healthcare package of a pulse oximeter and at least a six-month supply of vitamin C. Thank you, frontliners, for literally keeping our house in tip-top shape. We continue to strive to contribute to society. Together with our alumni from ACES and Aggregates, we organized webinars to cover the burning issues of the day. We talked about flooding, water resources management, transportation systems, and construction management. Speaking of water resources, one of the country's leading experts on this and a former chairman of the CE department, Dr. Guillermo Tabios III, has been conferred the rank of Professor Emeritus. Congratulations, Dr. Tabios, and thank you for the honor that you brought to IT. We have several research projects going on, which are designed to make a significant impact on the profession and the society at large. Funded by the PICARI, or Philippine California Research Institute Program, under the Commission of Higher Education, 
in collaboration with the University of California, Berkeley, and with the municipality of Guagua, Pampanga, there is the ICAR, which is developing a novel technology for the removal of arsenic from groundwater through electrochemical processes. The technology will be deployed in the municipality of Guagua in Pampanga. We are also implementing IWASTO, or Integrated Waste Analysis, Survey, and Technological Options, which aims to provide solutions to the solid waste management challenges affecting Manila Bay through waste utilization technologies and systematized information on solid waste management systems. Also addressing the Manila Bay Rehabilitation is the eSmart project which aims to describe the base hydrodynamics and water quality through numerical modeling and simulation analysis of various conservation and management scenarios and thus be the basis of interventions and policies for its rehabilitation. Iwasto and eSmart are under a bigger research program, the I Am for Manila Bay program which is funded by the DOST. Another project being funded by the DOST is the SWERVE project, which is done in collaboration with DOST FIBOX and DOST PAGASA. The program will generate risk maps for typhoon-prone areas in the Philippines. From colleagues from the National Center for Transportation Studies, or NCTS, we have eTRAMS, or Enhancement of Traffic Management Software, Data Strengthening for Child Road Traffic Injury Prevention in the Philippines, Transportation and Traffic Management Plan Formulation for Local Government Units, and a project on modeling and estimation of transportation energy demand of the Philippines. We have new projects which have just started this year, both funded by the DOST also. The PAVE project aims to improve the current system in preserving the road infrastructure in the Philippines by developing a prototype that can automatically detect the distresses along the road. The development of the prototype aims to have a faster data gathering of road defects, which also lessens the risk faced by surveyors. It also aims to introduce a new pavement index solely for Philippines that will rate the current condition of the road. The x perlite project aims to determine the appropriate process of expanding perlite such that it will conform to the standards of lightweight fine aggregates and to determine a suitable replacement percentage for mortar mixes that conform to ASTM standards. Aside from the projects, our faculty continue to be actively engaged with private companies, government agencies, and university committees in various capacities as technical consultants, members of PWGs, and policy advisors. We are happy to be of service to the university and the nation. That sums up what the Institute was up to this past year. Again, Thank you to all our stakeholders, our students, parents, industry partners, project staff, academic colleagues, both in and out of UP, for being a part of our journey towards honor and excellence. Let us all remain safe, cautious but calm, and continue to take care of each other. See you all next year in person.